Thank you for joining me today. My name is Ronnie Andrade. I am presenting the paper, Echolocation as a Means for People with Visual Impairment to Acquire Special Knowledge of Virtual Space. On behalf of myself and my co-authors, Jenny Waycott, Stephen Baker, and Frank Vettere. Uh, first, let's, uh, look at an, let's begin with the motivation. Um, as some of you might know, uh, video games are a multi-billion dollar industry, um, and people with visual impairment are willing and to engage with these types of games. However, one of the um, issues they face when trying to engage with digital games is understanding the uh, virtual space in which the games take place. In the physical world, people with visual impairment can use echolocation. Echolocation is a skill that's available to dolphins, uh, bats, and some humans, whereby, the, in this case, a human produces a sound and listens to how this sound bounces over different surfaces and creates a mental image of their surroundings based on this um, echo of how the sound they produce bounces over different surfaces. Um, so given that um, people with visual impairment have trouble understanding the special layout of virtual games, in this uh, study we tried to implement echolocation to support that ability to learn about um, virtual space. We address the following research questions. Uh, number one, what features of virtual space can be perceived with echolocation? Number two, how does active echolocation support people with vision impairment in acquiring special knowledge of virtual space? Number three, what are participants' opinions regarding the use of echolocation to acquire special knowledge of virtual space? Uh, about the participants, we had a total of 12 participants, 11 of them were blind, one had low vision, three were blind from birth, um, and all of them were under 69. This means that their um, uh, visual impairment wasn't due to their age. Uh, about the experimental design, the first part, uh, participants had to explore five levels um, and they had to repeat, explore each level a number of times. They had to explore level one, seven times, level two, seven times, level three, six times, level four, six times, and level five, eight times. Each level had a different goal. In level one, participants had to identify uh, the material a room was made of. Uh, in level two, participants had to identify whether a virtual room was small, medium, or large in size. In level three, participants had to identify whether a virtual room had a 90 degree turn to the left or to the right. In level four, participants had to identify whether the virtual room had an opening. And in level five, participants had to identify whether um, there was obstacles in the virtual room. Going on to the results, we found that after running a mixed effects logistic regression, uh, participants succeeded on level one, identifying material 75% of the time, on level two, size 64% uh, of the time, on level three, identifying turns 71% of the time, on level four, openings 40% of the time, and on level five, obstacles 43% of the time. Um, about the experimental design part two, in this level, participants had to explore a maze that uh, was comprised of two separate rooms. The first room where participants appeared was a 12 by 12 room, which had a uh, corridor on its north wall. The corridor had an L shape and the corridor was uh, six um, by six and the corridor ended in a uh, six by six uh, room. Uh, so we found that um, after exploring these uh, level, participants had to recreate it with modeling clay. And we found that when recreating the uh, layout with modeling clay, um, nine participants identified the presence of two rooms, six participants identified a corridor, um, four participants identified that the corridor had an L shape, um, five participants identified that the rooms were of different size, and overall, six participants made a accurate model. Uh, so in this research, um, we have learned two things. First, that participants could distinguish between virtual rooms that are covering carpet, wood, or metal, identify relative size of virtual room, and detect the presence of 90 degree turns to the left or to the right approximately 70% of the time, which is uh, above what uh, previous research has found for, blinded, uh, for blindfolded um, sighted individuals. We also found that um, these uh, characteristics can be used and combined so that uh, half of the participants could successfully integrate this spatial knowledge uh, to form a mental map of virtual space. Uh, this concludes my talk. Thank you very much.